Magic108FM.com, Earlsy Pearls. We go to the phone. Superstar, Herman Hitson. What's up, Earlsy Pearl? Hey, man. You just called right on time. We're having some memories regarding Hamilton Bohannon. I know that you are a very, very close friend. And uh, my condolences to him and his family and to you. Tell us what happened, Herman. I don't really know exactly what happened. Uh, uh, Reba Blue called me this morning uh, from 91.9, and she told me he had passed. Well, he had told me he was uh, <clears throat> he was sick. I had uh, I had stopped calling him, and uh, actually I blocked the number. Uh, I feel so bad about it now, though, because he's such a great friend of mine. We've been together so long. Uh, me, him, and George is George. So uh, I'm still trying to find out what's going on now. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but, you uh, know, it sounds strange. It sounds strange that you would block his number because you guys are extremely close. He must have been battling in terms of fighting within himself to bring you into the information around about his condition. Oh yeah, well you know we, uh, you know we like brothers, man. You know, and uh, uh, sometimes it uh, you have to get away from each other for a minute, and you know you understand because you love each other. And one thing about Bo Hanna, he was a businessman, brother, and he was a wise man, and uh, uh, he got a. <laughs> And he's about the only guy, man, that I know that got all his masters, you know, from his music. He got a room full of masters. He and, has a uh, room uh, full of masters. And, and see, that's phenomenal. Strong there. Yeah, man. And, and he was getting a lot of money from overseas. And uh, uh, he was he was still fighting, man. You know, he's, uh, they, he was just lonely. He got lonely, you know. It, his wife passed on him and... Uh, uh, living in that house by itself and walking around remembering uh, I go out there with him and uh, and hang out there with him me and George uh, uh, he called me a thousand times a day and uh, I have a lot I have his uh, uh, his latest stuff he did he was still recording man boy Hannah got some heavy stuff he's you know got some mean? new stuff of course I got it yeah Okay. Uh, well, see, we're gonna we're gonna air it. We're gonna air it if if it if we can. We definitely will air it in his memory because he was very influential yeah. with his his music. Of course, you guys were extremely close, and yeah. it's this just taking taking me aback. I'm I'm lost for words, Herman. Yeah, I understand, man. Uh, that's why we have to stay in touch with each other. Uh, because uh, this time of our life, man, you know, we never, uh, you can be all right now and the next second you're gone. I don't care how good you be looking or how good you feel. But um, uh, I'm sure they'll take it back to um, uh, Noonan. I was talking to, I was talking to Gordy George this morning and, uh, you know, we, we talked about it. And you know we were just close friends, man. Me and me, Courtney, George, Jimmy Hendrix, and all of us, Major Lance. You know we we was all that together. And um, um, uh, you know we um, we get real kind of sad when one of us pass. You know, but we don't want to grieve too long. You know what I mean? Just gr- grieving. Uh, you know they live within us. They live in our mind. The body's gone, but Bo Hammond is still here. He was a great man. He was a great guy. And, and I really appreciate him. I can still and, hear that music. Go ahead. Yeah, I remember when um, I had to meet Joe Tex out in um, San Francisco. Uh, me and the band. And and we was going to drive all the way out there because we had to stop through New Orleans and different places to play. And I needed some tires, man. And I asked Bo Hanna. Uh, he said, man, uh, now what you need? I said, man, I just need some tires to get out there. You know? And he bought me a whole set of tires. I tried to pay him back, and he told me he wouldn't, he wouldn't take it. So, um, uh, you know, we were just like that good friend. Oh, my God. 
And I go by, I go by sometime, and uh, you know him and I sit down and I reminisce. I remember when me and him and George and George and uh, Jimmy Henry, uh, we played a gig. I think it was in Los Angeles, something was going well. It okay. was just three pieces. Just three pieces. Guess how much we made? How much? Uh, just three pieces. <laughs> We made about two dollars and thirty cents a piece. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you blew me away with that. I thought you was gonna say, "Well, we made about four or five thousand dollars." <laughs> no, man. You, no, no. We made about two hundred thirty something cents. I think. <laughs> but, but we had funds, man. I don't right. hey, man. Man, coming up through the doggone business and all that, man. I done made. I know one gig I had to leave Jacksonville and go to Dogs on St. Augustine. Me and, the, me and the band working off the show, you know. And and the and, and promoters running off with the money, man. You know, I end up I end up making 18 cents. I, I'm not talking about $18. <laughs> <You> talking 18 <laughs> cents. <laughs> go all the way to St. Augustine. <laughs> <laughs> but we had big fun, though, you know, mm-hmm. coming up like that, learning. You know the learning, uh, learning process, and you know uh, once I got got in Atlanta on tour, these guys really whooped me in into being a pro, man. You know Jack Wilson, Sam Cook, and all those guys. You know uh, I end up being around, and uh, well, you know that's uh, that's history. That's the way it is. But with Bo Allen, man, you know he. Uh, he was a great guy, man, and he can really record. I hate to miss the show he gave over at Clark. That was a professional show, man. He did a real good show. It just wasn't uh, uh, advertised enough, but uh, the people were there that that really enjoyed it, man. It, everything was professional, and he paid all that out of his pocket. You see what I mean? Wow. And he was going to give he was going to give most of it to the school. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, yeah, he did that himself. He's a great guy, man. He's a great guy. You know, we all got our, uh, we all got our devils within us, man. You know, somebody had to pull our coat to it and say, hey, man, you got a problem over here. Sometimes we don't know. You know what I mean? But somebody else looking in can tell us. That's- so I told him about his ego a lot of time. Hey, man. And your ego about to burn your brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, he he was a great man, and he knew it. He knew he was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he knew it was great. He come up through you know, Motown. He was the band leader, and you know him and Stevie. Uh, 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 I used to come out to Fort Hamilton house. He'll call me, Marvin Gaye, I'll be out there, and we'll go out there, and I hang with my with with. Uh, I hang out there with him. Mom and Gay get on his bicycle and ride off. Don't know where he went. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> he'll come back, you know, that thing, everything cool. But, but, I, I think I met, I really, uh, I, I am, I knew Stevie Wonder. Okay. I knew him, but, but I didn't know him well. I had met him. Uh, but then uh, uh, through Bo Hannon, uh, we became friends. Steve uh, all those guys, yeah, yeah, all those guys hung out together. I think, I think, um, um, Steve one that got with him when he was about 14, 14 years old. Okay, because he was the band leader. Yeah, he was the band leader. Yeah, Earl, man, I'm glad to talk to you, brother. Man, I'm, I'm glad to talk to you with our listeners and just happy to talk with you anyway because you always drop good knowledge to me and encourage me to keep moving forward. And uh, I'm, I'm always listening when, when you're speaking. Hey, man, I appreciate that. And uh, uh, we're still going to do that video on Back in the Park. I'm getting ready now. Okay. Well, Hello. ladies and gentlemen, get ready for a video from Herman Hitson. Of course, Herman Hitson played with Jimi Hendrix. Herman Hitson he is 
all is in the movie Dolomite on Netflix right now. His song plays in that movie. And so he's a superstar, been a star for many, many, many years and close to Hamilton Bohannon and also close to Gorgeous George. What about Gorgeous George? Talk to us a little bit about Gorgeous George, Herman. Uh, I hadn't so, I had too long finished talking with him. Uh, he didn't know Bo had died. I called him and told him. After Reba Blue broke up, uh, woke me up this morning and, you know, gave me that news. Uh, but George is doing good, man. And, uh, you know, he's looking good. He's getting around well. And, and you know, he's still gorgeous George, man. You know, he was one of the guys... Man, when I first met him, when I first saw him, he was one of the sharpest people I've ever seen in my life. I mean, if it was, <laughs> if it was ten guys, if, if, if it was ten guys on the show at, at the Peacock or wherever, George and George gonna change the suit ten times. And he'll bring, he'll bring, Are you serious? <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, brother. And he showed me how he do it. And he do it. And him and Hank Ballard, you know, uh, the thing is, uh, the way George got that position, though, he was waiting on Hank Ballard. And uh, 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 Henry Wynn drove up. And he had George, he was just waiting on, and he told him he was waiting on Hank. Hank Ballard, Midnighters. Hank so, Ballard's uh, from the Midnighters. Yeah, yeah, Hank Ballard. Yeah, man. Hank Ballard was James Brown. Idol, buddy. You better play that one. But anyway, uh, 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 he said, come on. We got a program in Macon, Georgia. Had a lot of acts on there. A lot of acts. And they had this uh, MC to do it. Uh, but the MC couldn't make it. And so, you know, you got, uh, you got people... In the lobby setting programs of the show, you know, everybody pitching and all that stuff on the show. And so George was selling some of those, uh, some of those, uh, you know, picture, picture books. And so, uh, uh, Henry Wynn said, well, George, uh, uh, the MC didn't show up. I want you to go up, if you will, and bring the, and, and bring the artist on. And so, you know, George, George was real sharp. He was, real, he was looking real good. And so these girls were looking at it. And then the girls said, ooh, he is so gorgeous. And then that's when Henry Wynn said, you heard that? And he said, yeah. He said, that's going to be your name from now on. Gorgeous George. <laughs> that's how he was named. That's how he got his name. <laughs> well, I'm... Yeah, that's I- I'm happy that you are our one of our special guests on my new podcast, and it's called Uncle Pearl, Uncle, Uncle Pearl's, Pearl's Podcast. And so yes. I'm welcoming you on the air and simultaneously on Uncle Pearl's Podcast for everybody. Yes, so welcome, welcome, and you know I think that Hamilton Bohannon would like us to speak glowingly and to be congratulatory toward his accomplishments and yeah, not be very sad. So that's the reason why we uh, kind of upbeat because we know that he would want us to be that way. Of course, you're supposed to celebrate a person's life. It's not all about the boo-hoo and the crying. You do that when a person is born because you're coming into hell. You see what I mean? <laughs> oh, you boy. Finish, as you finish your journey, as you finish the journey of this life, this life is not easy. After you come out of this one, we supposed to celebrate the life and not the death. You see, they do it, they do it uh, most places, man. You know, they do it in New Orleans, but outside of the United States, especially uh, 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 the darker people and black people like us, uh, you see them celebrate the life of a person not in the churches doing flip knocking over pews crying and all that stuff you, you see and the most the most one doing all the crying was the one did less for the, for the one they was crying about 
So, right. so uh, 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 rest in peace, my brother. And we have lost many, man. Uh, oh, man. You know, you think about the people you know was dead and now they're gone. And as you get older and older, you know that's when we start falling away. More so. But anyway, man, I appreciate I appreciate talking to the people. You see, I'm talking to the people, right? That's right. You're talking to the people right now. And, and so you dropped some knowledge regarding celebration. And so... Uh, oh, yeah. That was that was big what you said. Ladies and gentlemen, please really, really absorb that because that's wisdom he just dropped as another jewel from Herman Hitson. And I just like to bring you on more often because you can drop those jewels and we can learn. We all can learn while we're being entertained. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And. And another thing, man, I talked to the radio lady today, and I was suggesting we're going to have to put together something. You understand, to celebrate his life. He's our brother, and I'm sure all the entertainers around here, uh, most will come forth and do it. We just have to get a place, and we put on something to celebrate for him in life. He was a great man. He was a great guy like all of us. We're supposed to take care of each other. You see what I mean? We forget so easy. We turn each other loose so fast. We jump on another dog like the flea do. You see what I mean? <laughs> jump on another dog like the flea do. Yeah, you know, people don't even talk about Sam Cook, Jack Wilson, all this rest. You, you see, and then then people like me, you came out and found a place to play. You, you see what I mean? And, and so you understand we just uh, we just promote uh, uh, as much as we can uh, promote uh, 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 one thing let me say this my new song is called I Should Have Been Home you you know what I mean right. you know you look at your woman look at your woman buddy come home I'm not talking about no coronavirus either I'm talking about that wife. <laughs> right. you, you come home or you'll come there one time and she'll be gone. And she'll be gone. So, uh, uh, you understand, thinking we all of that, like I said in my record, you looked around and find out, she said, boy, you just ain't what is that. And so the thing is, man, uh, uh, I look for um, CD Baby, iTunes, wherever you can find her and hit them. And check out some of the music. I have lots. I have many, uh, many different, uh, uh, different grooves that you can check out. But check my history. And I appreciate talking to you. And I love you. And maybe we get back together real soon. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Herman Hitson. I should have been home played here on magic108fm.com and close friend of Hamilton Bohannon we have just lost rest in peace outstanding Hamilton Bohannon and all of his hits played a lot in 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 Europe in recent years but the orchestra director of Motown in the 70s in the 80s and Hamilton Bohannon known and favored right here in Atlanta Georgia Herman Hitson, thanks, and you are welcome back anytime. Man, I appreciate it, man, and thanks to the people for listening. And uh, let's celebrate each other's life and not out there. You know, give us our flowers while we're alive and listen to listen to our story while we're alive because when we're gone, you won't get it from the, from the horse's mouth. And it'll be turned around the way someone else wanted to go in their version but talk to us now and get all you can from your parents you know listen to them listen to their story and you understand and keep us alive let's keep each other alive and celebrate our life and let's keep going all right and i thank y'all very much thank you earl the pearl my man thank you herman hitson uncle pearl's podcast and magic108fm.com.